In this video, I'm going to go over a little bit more as far as within the Maya interface, specifically the scene modeling area. That is this area here, as far as whenever you first open Maya and where you will be placing your models and creating your designs. Now, first thing, whenever you start working or whenever you first open the default, you're only going to have this one main scene open here. Now, this is your perspective view. The perspective view is fine for working in so long as you're comfortable with your keyboard shortcuts to navigate through the environment as far as panning, zooming, and rotating. Now, along with that, what I'm going to do is I'm just real quickly going to add in a couple of quick models here so that we just have something to work with and see inside of the scene here. All right, so as you can see, I have three models in the scene here. Now I could technically continue to work here and pan and rotate and zoom around my objects. However, by default within your working scene, Maya also offers this cube up in the top corner here, which allows you to snap between both orthographic and isometric views. So for example here, if I wanna look at the left side of the scene, I can just click and Maya will automatically set that up for me. Likewise, if I want to go on an angle, it will also allow me to click on the angles of my view cube. Lastly, I can click and hold on a space and I can navigate around the scene this way as well. This is a nice way that if I need to quickly snap or just check something, but I don't have a lot of uh, screen real estate that I can look at certain angles and make sure things are lined up. The other option too, whenever you're working between your different viewports in Maya is over on the left-hand side. By default, you have just a singular panel layout that again, you can come back over here, use your view cube and navigate or use your keyboard shortcuts. However, you also have some preemptively laid out panel views, one of which is the four point. This is pretty common as far as 3D modeling goes, and oftentimes you'll see a lot of modelers as you get into more detailed models will snap into this view to look at the multiple angles. Now, having said that, to make a specific viewport active, you're going to just need to click once. And it can be kind of hard to see, but you're going to get this light gray background here as far as the outline goes. But also too, you're going to see if you are using it, you're going to see your cube popping up for each of the scenes. Now, also with this, just so that you know, you can actually come in at any point in time and select an area or select a viewport and hit the space bar to enlarge it and make it your primary focus. You can then hit the space bar again very quickly and it'll snap you back into the original four point. It's up to you how you want to work with this. For right now, I'm going to snap back into that perspective view. Now, for each of your viewports here, another thing I want to point out is the menu bar going across the top here. Like its counterpart as far as the overall Maya software where you do have as far as your tabs, but also your main menu bar across the top, each viewport is going to have its own set of options here. Just to get folks started, since this is an introductory video, I want to draw your attention first off to what is indented here as far as the grid is concerned. This is a way that you can turn on and off the grid. The grid can be helpful, but if you're not concerned about exporting or you just want to have a working space as far as getting into sculpting, you may not need to have the grid turned on. The other items that I wanna draw your attention to that I often see students get a little mixed up with is this set of squares and the light bulb right here. This is how things appear in your working environment as far as the scene is concerned. Sometimes it can help to actually turn these down as you are working. So for instance, I snap to wireframe. This can actually help with processing speed a little bit. If I already have a model laid out I don't need to see the details all the time. So sometimes it can be helpful as far as just snapping into wireframe mode while I'm doing some layouts and adjustments. However, a lot of folks by default, they'll just have a smooth shade on. As you can see though, you can go through and also choose as far as viewing your materials, 
You can also have both wireframe and the default shading. You can texture once you have textures applied. And if you have lights in a scene, you can turn them on and off, as well as integrating the shadows and whether or not they show. As you get towards the end here, whenever you get into things like the textures, lighting, and shadows, those are things more along the lines of whenever you're getting ready to render out your scene. I would not encourage folks to be working with and laying out a scene where you are working with those on constantly. The other item that I'd like to show you here as the last item for this video to get started with your working environment here is if you wanna change the background. As you can see by default, Maya loves its gray on gray on gray design. So having said that though, you can come in and if on a Windows machine at least, using Alt plus B as in balloon, you can snap between different backdrops for your working environment. The gradient you see here was kind of the original for Maya as far as layout goes. Personally, I like having a black backdrop. I like that high contrast, but this is completely up to you. So again, that is the Alt key plus B as in balloon. So that might help you if you're having trouble seeing your models or you haven't applied textures yet, that's something that you can set up.